passing planets. You found him. Um, you can just no, leave it with my secretary. That's a very good observation. I'm at the doorstep. motor. Agent Scully is uh, currently on vacation right now. That's right. What's this about? I don't 
will send you down here because of your hard work and dedication. But, uh, hey, congratulations. Uh, welcome to the land of the forgotten. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's just what I call this down here. Because this is usually where the burrow just Towards the dirty laundry. And you see the laundry and direct a miller for jurisdiction on the exiles. They want to be able to study and cross reference. Investigate and concern is also in classified operations. And being strong armed to agree to the following. If you choose to accept, you actually agree to this. You, you do know what the X Files is, right? Kind of. the X-Files. Um, do you have any questions? Current case. Now, our new assignment is a feature. You get along with people. Okay, okay. Are you, um, are you a cat? That's good, that's good. Why do I ask? Um, well, our current assignment, uh, kinda has uh, a lot to do with dogs. Please have a seat. 
make yourself comfortable. I have a coffee machine over there if you want, if you want some coffee. I have some right here. Okay. Make yourself at home, Agent uh, Harrison. What do you know about cryptozoology? That's right. It's pretty much the study of um, mythical creatures. Um, so that's kind of where the, this case uh, falls into place. So, a couple of days ago, the Los Angeles Harbor Police um, reported what they call animal bites. Angeles Harbor Police with you and uh, see what you take on it. All right, so uh, like I said uh, it says weapon uh, force or means used animal bites. Apparent motive unknown. Victim's name is. Liu Chen Wu and Su Din Fong. Uh, location was Freighter Tian Cao, San Pedro. Suspects one dog, breed unknown. So it's a canine of sorts. Um, date and time occurred was approximately 2 a.m. on the 10th. And the date and time this report was filed 8 a.m. on the 11th. So that was filed the next day. Uh, Trademarks of suspects, not available. Type of premises, cargo freighter in the lower cargo hold. Uh, investigative yeah. division, Los Angeles Harbor Police, US Customs was also involved. Okay, let me read the, the report. All right, well, anyhow. Victims were citizens of Hong Kong, China. And that's where this dog 
of unknown breed. Very likely that an unknown person is involved in it too. So they think that there was also a person involved as well. Now, listen to this. Both victims found by fellow crewman Chen. Victims found inside a locked steel cage that was loaded, locked, and secured in Hong Kong, China. So, get this. They're hauling a container locked and secured from the time they picked it up till the time of this incident. Dog escape somehow. They port at Los Angeles Harbor. They find the cage still locked and secured. But instead of a dog inside, two of their own crew members. How do you explain that? What's your thoughts on it? And that's why they think that another person is involved. I'm not so sure. Reportedly carrying a large dog of unknown breed. Large dog. Victims suffered severe bites from unknown animal. So, right there. They were apparently attacked by this dog. Evidence of the animal attack. So, if another person was involved, why weren't they attacked as well? And if the person involved was one of the two crew members, how'd the cage get locked and secured with both of them in it? Yeah. Particip participation of another crew member likely. Victims were locked in cage from the outside. Ship's Captain Yi, cooperating with investigation, cage was to be delivered to a Dr. Detweiler in L.A. Dr. Detweiler continues to be interviewed by Los Angeles City Harbor Police. is a local legend of China called the 
Wen Sheng Du. It's kind of a werewolf type creature. Do you believe in wolves? You know. Okay. Well, let me read this to you. Far different from the rust red fur of the dull, the highly social canine, commonly found all over Central, South, and Southeast Asia, the Wen Chang Dole is a solitary, mythical canid. Although some believe the breed became extinct in the 1840s, little to no evidence of its corporal form has ever been found. Chinese folklore details that the Wang Sheng Dole is far more than its wolf-like physical appearance, possessing mythical powers that include shape-shifting and disappearing into thin air. Nocturnal fears of the Wang Sheng Dole were based on its ability to silently open doors and steal loved ones in the middle of the night. Right there, I mean, we have a dog of unknown breed in a cage. Dog of unknown breed escapes. Two crew members somehow get locked in this cage. It's uh, starting to sound a lot like the wing door. Much like the beliefs surrounding the werewolf myth, through a kind of blood curse, the person afflicted with the spirit of the wing shang door is believed to go through physical transformation, becoming a volatile, bloodthirsty hound with glowing red eyes and supernatural abilities. Wen Sheng Dou is considered a trickster spirit that, re that revels in toying with its victims before biting them to death. Biting them. And how did the victims die? But uh, this is a picture of Karen. She's an expert on uh, canines. So, you know, like she said on the phone with me, um, there's a lot of characteristics going on here that are canine. Like including two large canine footprints in some oil that was spilled in the cargo. Two other kids. 
case files I'd like to show you. And then we're going to go to Los Angeles. Uh, I have a rental car waiting in the garage. I already put word in. And I also have us two first class tickets on a flight to Los Angeles. And we'll have a rental car waiting there. I actually thought I was going to be going alone on this case. Uh, but let it up to Director Skinner. He sent me a group temporary agent. So the first case I want to show you. isn't as direct as the second case I want to show you, but similar. So this case is pretty much a Jane Doe. It's unknown. This was a shapeshifter, or even a descendant of Neanderthal. Yeah, that's right. Possibility. But there was a woman. naked to look like this. This is a police sketch of the woman and man. There was two and the behavior of these two were animal-like in nature. They attacked threats. They scavenged through dumpsters garbage cans for food so um, unfortunately uh, they were both killed by local New Jersey authorities um, and uh, there was rumors going around that they were the Jersey Devil I believe otherwise here you can see a surveillance photo of the suspect, but as you can see, there are some characteristics of kind of a wild animal, especially like a dog. So. That's the first case I want to show. Kind of uh, to get you familiar with what we're going to be dealing with. The second case. more similar to what we're going to be dealing with. It'll be very similar to the assignment we're about to go on. So, a little backstory. Um, this took place uh, near Glacier National Park in Montana. started out looking like a war between a 
rancher and a Native American reservation turned out to be a little more than that. So, let me read your eye. Agent Scully and I began our investigation at the Park Ranch. The Parker's attorney, David Gates, was present. Jim Parker was free on bond, pending trial, but was accused of murdering Joseph Goodsnake with a shotgun at close range. Jim was also involved in a federal court case against the Trago Indian Reservation concerning land ownership. Jim claimed four of his cows had been eviscerated inside of a month by a predator that was like no animal that I know of but didn't seem human either, with red eyes and fangs. He believed he fired his shotgun at this creature, not good to stop it from attacking his son Lyle. Lyle's wounds from the attack were four deep claw-like scratches now keep that in mind, because when I show you the autopsy report of the vic one of the victims, well, both victims, it's very similar. On inspecting the corral where Good Snake died, I discovered a set of tracks that looked as though they changed from human footprints to canine-like paw prints. I also found shed skin in the shape of a hand, but the police and coroner's reports make no mention of skinning. Now, here is what I found in the mud. These were the size of my hand. There's no way that could have been a regular wolf, or fox, or coyote, or the family dog. There's no way. Snake and his sister Gwen were primarily responsible for fueling the boundary dispute with the Parkers. Sheriff Desanke uh, led us to Gooden Snake's body in his office. He had scar tissue from clomers on his chest, very similar to Lyle Parker's wounds, and his upper canine teeth 
or abnormally sharp um, to the point where they were feral fangs. Um, we're talking, they were like that big. Uh, so we requested dental records. And then this here is the x-ray of Joe Gooden Snake's dental records. Showed normal human cuspids. A request for an autopsy was denied because trigger belief forbid it. And the funeral ceremony cremation was that night, so we didn't really have time. And you know, we couldn't go against their beliefs. It, it just wasn't right. Jim Parker was the next victim to be mauled and killed. Agent Scully's assessment was that the attacker must be a large predator or else the scene was staged to mimic the attack of such an animal. A sizable claw was extracted from Jim's body and I found a clump of fur and skin in the vicinity. Agent Scully found Lyle Parker naked nearby, suffering from exposure. He was taken to the hospital, but at this point he was also a suspect. So, received some snapshots from Gwen um, Goodensnake and there's the picture she took tell me what you see Could it be a bear? Sure. Bears have been known to stand upright, so sure. It could have been a bear. I don't think so. You sure you don't want to? Some types of mm -hmm. Figured I'd ask. Now. Before I show you the autopsy report. Watch National Geographic at all. Okay. So, you know a little bit about animal attacks, other than shark week, right?
at number one, Liu Chen Wu. As you can see, claw marks on the chest, as well as the neck and back. Light claw marks on the face and bite wounds or puncture wounds on the skull. But right there. Sounds familiar to the other case, right? Exactly. Could be a copycat. has yet to be solved so it could very well be the same killer I don't know but we'll find out here's the second victim again the four claw marks this time on the back the neck and the face as well as puncture wounds or bite marks on the skull. Also with both victims, lacerations on both hands. So they were fighting the attacker or at least defending themselves. Here's a summary. Transcription of statement made by Hong Kong freighter worker. This was translated from Cantonese. So I was part of the team that worked on prepping the Tian Cao freighter for its trip to California, and I had worked with Liu Chen Wu and Su Dian Fong for years. I was assigned to manage the transportation of crate from its delivery truck onto the TO Co. But something just felt wrong. It wasn't because of the strange growls that others claimed to have heard coming from the box. It was a feeling, a sickness. Like when you see a terrible road accident. Without looking closer, you know that someone has died. That is what I remember the most about that cargo. It felt like death itself. I was glad to see the freighter leave the port. Sounds pretty, uh, pretty intense description. Don't you think? That could be. But how do you explain the puncture wounds on the on both victims' heads? If it's from falling, they'd be more like lacerations. Understandable. That's 
possible, but... But with your theory, um, don't you think all those claw marks on these victims, yeah, they were wearing uniforms. As you can see here. Yeah. Uh, unless they don't clip their fingernails. I really don't see how a fellow crew member could have clawed both of these guys up. First thing I want to do is uh, take a look at the bodies. They're still in the morgue. Uh, I wish Scully was here uh, to do a full examination. But you're not. Certified, right? I wish you were. This will definitely give us time to uh, get to know each other more. Assigned to me, but you know, while you're here, at least. Uh, all right. Well, grab your things, and uh, I'll meet you in the garage. Yeah. All right. 